Hello everybody, this is Toys R Us and for this special figure showcase and review we're going to be looking at the 1991 European exclusive Action Master Elite windmill figure. So what we're going to do with this video, we're going to have a detailed look at him in both of his modes and that is correct. I know he's an Action Master but for those of you who are unaware he's an Action Master Elite and he does actually transform so he's got two modes. Um, I'm going to try and show you the gimmick that he had as well because they actually came with their own little gimmicks. We'll see how he compares with some of the other Action Masters that were released at that particular time. Um, for those of you who are unaware as well or one of I suppose size comparison guide as to how big he is to today standard figures we can put him up against some core class figures and indeed some of the deluxe class figures that have been released recently just to give you an idea of how big he is right now before we get started i need to do one thing and that is i couldn't even do this video it wouldn't be possible without saying a huge huge thank you to adam graham and for those of you who are unaware um he is a channel member and friend who actually sent me this as a gift an unbelievable gift and i'm still completely blown away by his generosity so thank you ever so much adam for exactly that it's just a truly amazing gift and it's a pleasure to review him on this channel and share it with everybody else thanks to you so as i mentioned he came out in 1991 um, only in the european markets now there was four of them there was two autobots there was windmill and there was omega supreme I've done a video on this guy already and yes he does look a lot like omega supreme and it's not a typo he is called omega supreme and there were two decepticons as well there was double punch and there was turbo master now these also look very familiar he obviously looks like a scorpion or called black zarek and he actually looks a bit like bruticus but this isn't about them this is just to show you that there was four figures two autobots and two decepticons so the accessories that came with him are these rotor blades now these are often lost damaged or missing completely they do separate like so um, and this three millimeter peg can be put into either his hand like so and again of course you can just connect this to it so i'd always recommend keeping them connected then you're not going to worry about losing them it can be connected together it can go in his hand on the side of his forearm and it will in fact go there as well but that is mainly for when he is in the other mode which again i'm going to show you in a second now the action master gimmick which would spin the rotor blades when you pop it inside this hole is this it's like a gatling or a chain gun here and it is a bit temperamental unfortunately but we'll have a look in the other mode in a second and i just wanted to show you where it was so because he's an action master articulation on it is it's not too bad we can turn the head around we can spin the arms around the legs have got articulation up down they've got a knee bend there's a teeny bit shall we say of, a, of an ankle tilt but mainly due to transformation processes and purposes and there's also like a knee bend as well in these um, so quite a bit of articulation the color scheme is completely zany totally out there very much again it's keeping in with the theme of the european figures things to be aware of are the gimmick the missing rotor blades and the corrosion to the screws and also with this particular leg which you're going to see in a second does have a tendency to break and that is again mainly due to the transformation so without further ado let's have a look at it and again please bear with me as i do this super slowly so this is going to turn into a helicopter it is known as a high impact strike helicopter so let's have a go at this carefully we're going to take the one arm we're going to bring it around and all the way up we can then take this leg we're going to bring this out we are then going to rotate it like so fold out which of course is going to be like the landing parts i've gone the wrong way around you see this tab here this needs to be so if i close these back up this tab is then going to fit into this hole here like so slot into place and then fold these out at the same time we can then turn the head around which will now of course look like the top or the cockpit shall we say of the helicopter like so and then we're going to fold the foot in like that and bring out the tail from the back this means now that if you had these in his hands or on the side we would now move this into the top position like so and there is 
your attack stroke strike helicopter. Okay, granted, let's be honest, it is not the most difficult transformation, um, but it's genius. It's so good. It looks brilliant from all angles. Maybe not that one. Maybe it looks... It's just it's so, so clever. I really like it. Really like it. Let's have a look and see and pray if this... Oh, it's super tight. I'm with these. I'm ever so, ever so... I don't think I'm going to try it, guys, unfortunately. I think this... Oh, yep. It sort of went there. It sort of went there. But that would... There's a motor which connects into there. And it would spin these rotor blades around. It's catching on it. I don't want to do any more damage to it. Um, but unfortunately... Well, at least you get the idea of what the gimmick was and what it would do. Um, so there you go. There is, as I say, his alternate mode. What we're going to do now, then, is let's take him back into robot mode and just do a few more of them comparisons. So I'm going to carefully take that out of there. I'm going to separate the leg from the arm. I'm going to fold in the landing gear, rotate this around and slide it back. Bring up the toes, hide away the fin, turn the head around. Bring this down. There we go. And I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to keep it on the side. If I put it there, it just won't balance very well. So I'm going to pop it on the side and stand him there so i'm sure you'll agree quite an interesting um and quite unique uh little figure so as i say the original action masters which came out um were all this sort of height to this sort of size and at the moment we seem to be getting quite a bit of action master um yeah i suppose love we've obviously got the super seven ultimates actual version of uh bombshell as well and um of course we're getting some other figures um down the generations line as well the generation select line so he's bigger than a standard action master figure um but he's also bigger than a newer core class figure but he's nowhere near as big again as to be expected as a newer deluxe figure and especially some of the larger deluxe figures like dk3 breaker which i popped up behind you can see there, there goes Shockwave, which is good because it's given me space to move in uh, Orion Pax, who's again from an older toy line. Um, and again, just to give you an idea of just how big he is, because sometimes, as we know, the toy sizes do actually change height. And there we go. One last thing to do then just to round this video off, because in all honesty, there's not much more to say about him. It is just to put up his other Action Master Elite buddies around the side of him. Um, again, just for a bit of appreciation and indeed to appreciate the crazy, wacky colour schemes that they had. So there we've got Omega Supreme. There we've got Windmill. There we've got Turbo Master. And finally, Double Punch. Reviews on these two will be coming up soon on the channel. Omega Supreme is there already. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed looking at him. Let me know in the comments what you think of him and any other of the figures that I've got that you'd like to see reviews on this channel. Thanks for watching. Take care.